Hi, everybody, and welcome to part seven of the Metric Minute brought to you by Vault Performance. I'm Kareem Durkawi, and today we will jump over the flight phase, no pun intended, on our way to examining peak landing force. Now, this metric is exactly what the name describes. It's the highest force value produced when landing after a jump. A safe, typical landing technique begins with initial toe or forefoot contact, then progresses towards heel contact. This requires rapid eccentric loading of the Achilles calf complex and enables afferent reflex mechanisms to begin a coordinated response. The knees and hips then experience strong torques to decelerate body mass moving at speed. Afterwards, the force trace returns back to body weight levels. Now, here are two examples of different landing strategies. The first is an athlete with certain attributes. Notice the weight and vertical jump height. You see that he lands with almost nine times body weight. A quick examination of the eccentric phase shows weak loading ability. Combining weak eccentric performance with a huge peak landing force like this one suggests this athlete may not be able to decelerate hard and fast. Rather, he prepares slowly for the jump and lands very stiffly. However, this athlete is taller and heavier with nearly the same vertical jump height. Notice how his eccentric phase is exceptionally potent, plus his peak landing force is only about three times body weight. This suggests he can load effectively and land softly with control, thus reducing injury risk. The take-home message is that landing forces rely greatly on loading ability. Comparing results with eccentric phase performance might reveal patterns that can be improved. Now next time we will zoom out and examine how everything starts to come together. Until then, please feel free to touch base with me or any of us at Vault Performance. Thank you.